Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about Euro, the most complicated champion in Valorant. I mean, agent. Well, whatever. And I'm serious about it. This guy is the most complicated one from all the agents we have so far. Even more complicated than, let's say, Viper and Sova combined. And why? There's a lot of small mechanics but first let's talk about um what uh, what skills does he have so first of all he has fake out for 100 credits uh so very cheap two charges uh mimics footsteps right then we have blindsight which is for 200 credits two uh slots for that as well um so his entire kit is basically 600 credits so with a full buy it's 4.5k uh, the blind side is just basically a flash that ricochets. And then we have Great Crash, which is the free um, uh, skill that you can use every single round, and it refreshes after two kills. Uh, it's the teleport that he uses, and Dimensional Drift is the ultimate with seven orbs needed to play it. Now, quick, quick, let's say, demonstration of what he does. Uh, the footsteps can be played in two versions. Left click is just the footstep are just going forward right uh right click is setting them in the spot waiting for an activation they are being activated the same way as killjoy or cyphers um cages so just press use and then they're being activated they go straight to a point where they cannot walk again and they stop they make a little bit of a noise when they are not active like not making um uh, not making any footers when they disappear but other than that, they are silent there. And they are also silent while being dormant. So you can use that. One of my favorite things to do with this is actually faking out not long, like, let's say, strides, right? But what you can do with it, it is when you, when you defend uh, a side, let's say we're going to be in hookah, right? You can help yourself. Oops, sorry, that's not the skill. Um, you can help yourself. So we put the footsteps here decoy. as a decoy, right? You're holding this angle. And now think about it a little bit like the uh, Killjoy's robot, maybe a little bit less efficient. But let's say you know they're going in, right? You activate it. It makes two footsteps, which basically is not a lot. People will probably, let's say, assume that you just made a footsteps noise by accident. And because of that, they're going to check that angle and you're going to get a free kill, at least on one guy. Right, because he's gonna get he's gonna get um, this angle like checked while you just stand here and bam, shoot his head in the back. So that's one of the uh, usage that you can do with it. Uh, ob obviously, fully using the footsteps to just walk somewhere is also advisable. Um, they also can be a little bit directed when you do it on a curved uh, wall like this. As you can see, it takes a path. But what is very much appreciated is let's say you attack. You attack long, or you want to fake it. So what you can do is, let's say you smoke garden, right? Someone helps you out, and now you just want to fake decoy. it. You put two, decoy. two decoys in one spot. You can activate it from all over the other side of the map. Right? Let's say you're standing in the showers, and you can activate those footsteps, two pairs of footsteps, while attacking showers, an example. And this makes a lot of noise. Bear in mind that the footsteps are actually, um, you know, they make the noise that are the, exactly the same noise as a normal character for the opponents. They only sound different for your teammates. Right? This is convincing of charging. So you can use that on different maps, on locations that you want to fake, as two people are just running there, which is very important. You can also do this with you, so that's three people. Three people is basically like, a, oh yeah, they're breaching this site, basically. So that's very useful. Um, and what you can also do uh, with the footsteps is what is very, very uh, interesting is you can use the footsteps to trigger, an example, Killjoy's uh, turret or the Alamo bot. You can also use it to trigger the Cypher's trap if it's low enough, right? That's, that's the main takeaway from this. If it's like on the bottom of the floor, you can trigger it by using your footsteps. You can also use it to trigger the Roomba from race, as you can see. So let's just say that the footsteps are very useful and they only cost 100 credits. So if you, the, the better the player is that can use them, 
the better the skill is. And it can make a lot of confusion on the map, which is cool because that makes it very complicated to play around and play with, right? So it rewards skill. Now, let's talk a little bit about the next skill, which is the flash. Now, this also is not as easy to understand as you would think of, right? Because this flash works like it bounces once and then uh, it explodes like this. Uh, and it's pretty loud as well. If it explodes next to you like this... Oh my god, I'm still like missing keybinds. If it explodes next to you, it's actually very loud. Right? But the trick is... So first of all, this is being thrown in a lob. As you can see... I'm, let's say, po I'm pointing at this um, small window here. Look how the ball travels. It travels to a lob, so there's a lot of mastery in it to know exactly where it's gonna go. It's a little bit like snake bite from Viper. Now, another thing is that it will not explode until it hits a wall. If it doesn't hit anything, then it will not explode, it will just vanish. I'm not sure if this will be enough. Let's see. Ah, maybe a little bit higher. Ah, here we go. It vanishes, basically. So it has to hit something um, to explode and make the flash and the sound. Now, the trick is also to know that your opponents will not see or hear the first part of the travel, so before the bounce. So basically what does mean is that your opponents will only see the flash once it hits the wall. And this is very important because it doesn't it doesn't tell your opponents um sorry your it doesn't tell your position for your opponents it just doesn't reveal you so much, right? You can be standing like in a backside you proc it here, obviously not, not in this way, so you don't get flashed, but your opponents will only see it bounce from here, and then they will, like, think, either if they see the exact bounce, they, they will not know when it was coming from. Like, an example from Breach, you can easily read it, because if the, if the flash will explode from this side, right, from this side here, then it, you know it hit from here, and it has to be a straight line, an example. With this bounce, you'll basically never know. So this is pretty cool. You can do pop flashes, which, you know, it, there's a lot of fun in this. You can also use it, uh, an example, when you're breaching corridors, you can use it to flash behind you, like this. Alright, so you don't get flashed, your opponents get flashed. This way. So it's useful for yourself. You can obviously use it also the other way around, but remember, they're gonna see the bounce, right? Like this. So there's a lot of com there's a lot of comboing. And you can also use it as a flash with Phoenix when uh, there's a trick that you still see the explosion, but you're not being flashed. I, I don't have the timings right. I just did it right, but it was an accident. Like this a little bit. Oh, see? So you can land this. Like this. And you know they're flashed while you're not being flashed. And you can immediately then re -peak. So this is a flash that is very powerful. Um, the opponents will still hear you, apart from the moment there's the explosion, which is pretty uh, pretty loud, but other than that, they're going to still hear you. So remember, only the blinds from Omen and Reyna will cut the cues from audio. Now, let's talk about this little guy. The teleport. Now, this one is even more complicated. First of all, you will not be able to place it um, on a higher level than you would be able to, like, you know, just jump like this. Basically, if it's something really, really high up, like this, or like the boxes on Ascent, you're not gonna be able to place it. Not like Kildred Turret, right? But if something is, like, a little bit next to you, you can still put it there. Uh, and there's two ways of doing it, exactly the same way as Footsteps. So either you put it so it travels, and it travels the same way as the Footsteps, so it will go around a wall that is curved, and the um, the actual timer is, if I'm not mistaken, I'm around 20 seconds, which is very long. Yeah. Right? It can also put it statically, when it just stands here. It makes a little bit of noise, but that's about it. Um, your po it this is invisible to your opponents, unless they're very close, so I'm going to show you in a second. But in general, you can teleport it whenever you want. So this allows to be 
a defensive and an offensive tool. Let's say, uh, let's say you'd want to check if someone is, um, if someone is, uh, is attacking your side, and if if there's a super quick rush on the other side, you will use it defensively to travel faster, right? So there's the barrier up, run sods. You put the teleport here. You go in. You flash. Check in. There's no one here. The timer is still up. Look at this. Look how long the timer is, right? It's not even close to the end. You can go here. You can just massively rush, make confusion, put footsteps, and then go back. And you're back on site, and you can rotate on A from this side. This is amazing. This, uh, this allows to make such a confusion on the map. It's actually quite amazing. You can also use it this way. You just put it there. Obviously, there might be opponents who might not shoot it on purpose, right? But you might just end up using it in this location, still wait for it, your opponent might just not destroy it, not see it, whatever. You flash here, you teleport here. They're flashed, and suddenly you're in this spot. There's so much potential potential for outplay with this skill, it's absolutely insane. I'm going to show you something. This is a turn where I play Reyna, we also have a Breach, and we're going to help out our Yoru, to breach lamps. We're gonna do it as a team, but it's gonna show you how much potential has the teleport. Just look at this. So I'm... don't destroy it. Woo! Like Stop talking. Flash right behind your orb. So basically what we do is we use all the utility to help Yoru get there to the lamps, to the position. There's a concussion first, then the aftershock will cut corner, right? I'm using the leers so no one hears the teleport coming. Yoru teleports, flashes, and we breach lamps. Like, that's an ins insanely powerful map control that was allowed to be, you know, there's a lot of utility being, utility being used, but we got lamp control with no effort, basically, right? No one shot a bullet, but we just got it because we breached it as a team. And this uh, this is being allowed, this is why I think Yoru and Omen or Reyna are made for each other, because... Omen and Yoru, sorry, Omen and Reyna can make your opponents deaf. So they are not able to hear the teleport. They're not able to hear uh, the orb from the teleport traveling. They cannot hear basically any, like, even fake footsteps or whatever. They can be easily confused by the fact that they don't know what's happening. Because there's no audio cues, there's no visual cues, and then suddenly Yoru is next to you and you're being breached. So the skill, the teleport orb can go through traps, can travel below them, right? And then you teleport across and basically it works like an omen teleport, uh, which is very cool. As you can see also, the orb is not visible unless you're very close. This is going to be the test of the visibility of the orb. The orb is traveling, you can destroy it, as you have seen. It took four bullets of the classic. But you cannot see it unless you're very close. And once you saw it, it's gonna be there quite a while. You're gonna see it in a moment as well. There it travels. I'm able to see it. I go back. This is where it disappears. And it goes back when you're going to go be close to it. So the teleport is a very powerful tool that allows you to both confuse, uh, rotate, and be aggressive at the same time. It's a multi-purpose tool that is fantastic. You can, you know, you can make a comparison to Omen's, uh, Omen's teleport, but I do think this one is way more versatile and allows to more crazy outplays. But at the same time, it's a little bit vulnerable. If your opponents will be able to locate it, because they will be also able to wait for you while you teleport there and then get a, you know, get a drop on you. Uh, what is very, also very important uh, to know is the timings, which in the case of Omen, when he teleports, he is not able to move for a very long time. In case of Yoru, once you teleport, you can basically move almost instantly, as you can see. Right? So this is also worth knowing, especially when you're going to see the orb and you're going to be preparing yourself for the teleport. You have to be ready. 
the Yoru will be on the move instantly. On instantly, once he gets there, he's going to be moving. So you're going to have a very small window of, of reaction uh, on this spot where he teleports, and you will probably need already to track his movement from the moment uh, he, he appears. Now, let's talk a little bit about his ultimate. His ultimate needs to act, be activated. So once you press X, you need to press mouse one. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I already made few mistakes with that because I thought I'm just going to activate the ult by pressing X. Right? I'm not sure why is it this, this way, but I guess the animation is one of the reasons. Because it's so cool to hold this in your hand. <laughs> I guess. Uh, but once you put it in... You're running with a knife, uh, sorry, a little bit faster than a knife speed. And as you can see, you travel in another dimension. So you are invisible unless someone is very close to you. You can see this small area of effect with the lines. This is the this is the moment someone will see you. I'm going to present to you how it looks uh, for your opponents. But in general, it's very important to know that once they're in that range... They will hear you, they will see you, and also the vision will a little bit will be a little bit bluish. But it's also very important to know that you can use this as a scouting device. Because if your opponent is standing in the corner, you will see him. You will see him, but he will not see you. And I'm gonna present to you that in action. So now you will see your will go through the hookah. He will tell me there's someone on the left, so I can easily peek. And just get a free kill because of that. Think of it as a way more powerful Sova drone, but it's an ultimate, so it has to be powerful. Now, when it comes to seeing how the ult looks from your opponent's perspective, this Yoru will use his ultimate right in the moment, and you will see that he will become invisible. But once he is close to you, he will be revealed in a blue shade. He will have no weapon out, he will not have a knife out. So the only thing you will see is the blue Yoru just running around. He will be invincible in that state and will not be affected by any skills as well. He disappears. You will not hear him. But once he's once he's close to you, as you can see, there's this blue blue hue around your screen on the left and right that will tell you, ah, Yoru is next to me. And now you can see him while he is in his ultimate, but he cannot be affected in any way. And this is where he goes out of the ultimate. So you're going to see him once you get a glimpse of him, you can follow him and know him where he is. But once you will lose him from your sight, you will not be able to tell where exactly he is. And obviously the, the ult allows to go through traps as presented here now this is a retake uh scenario i'm using the ult to just go on site scout a little bit get a drop on someone i see this guy in the right my omen my omen will use the blind on the side so sky was doesn't know what's happening reyna was caught off guard and now i have a 1v1 a successful retake basically right but we're running out of time and i still have to defuse the bond while the jet is alive now this is a very good example of how Yoro and Omen can work together. The flash flashes by, by the way, without knowing exactly, oh, without the jet knowing exactly what's happening because the, the she couldn't hear uh, or see the flash before it bounces, right? So it caught her off guard. But but in general, um, the ult allows a very cool combination of skills. Once you see here, once you see here. Uh, when I'm when I'm in the ult, the Reyna should know that I'm next to her. But you know we're playing a new character. Someone is not exactly sure what's going on, right? But he is under range. He is his screen is a little bit bluish, and he will be able to hear me. But he wasn't aware of how exactly my ult works, so he wasn't that aware, right, of, of my position. But now the blind from over goes through. Sky will not see anything. And because of that, I'm able to get a double kill. This could have been played way better, but it only shows how much potential outplay there is with this character. It's absolutely insane. So anyway, that's my take 
on um, on the first, let's say, impressions of Yoru. I think it's a fantastic agent. Very complicated to play, but also very rewarding to play. Will require a lot of practice and probably a lot of synergy with your team. So might not be the best uh, character to play in the solo queue. Uh, but in general, I love him. He's absolutely amazing and super fun to play. Hope you guys will gonna enjoy your time testing him out because there will be so much to learn about him and i cannot wait to see what will the pros uh come up with you know when it comes to this character and the team compositions around him